So, sir, my first question is like, what inspired you to become a filmmaker, sir? Like, during have you, were you inspired by a particular film or a book or something? What inspired me? Uh, so, it's a bit of a long drawn answer. I mean, it's I mean, it's quite straightforward that way. But um, I actually am very new to film. Like, just the whole idea of expressing through film. Let's put it that way. Because I started my journey in theatre. Like, you know, I actually started as an actor uh, when I was in my you know, final year engineering. And by very accidental chance, I landed up in a theatre group. And uh, they were doing a play. And I said, I'll offer to be a production person. I'll, I'll make sure I'll, you know, I'll get chai, samosa. I'll make sure I'll do scheduling and all that. Um, in that process, somehow midway, what happened was, I think a couple of the actors could not continue because of, you know, date issues and all that. So the, the writer and director of that play, he decided to recast, like rewrite some of the parts. And then one of the days, I think he saw me doing, so when we used to do improvisations in theater, um, it was a very open space. It was a very welcoming space. So he would like, you know, even if I was a production person, he would be like, no, no, you also join. You also go and do this exercise. It will be fun for you. So I think one of the days in some acting exercise, I think something happened. And he said, that, would you like to act if I read one of the one of the small parts that I would do? So I was like, I don't know how to act. I don't even know how to stand on stage. In fact, I have stage fear. So uh, so then he said, no, no, it's okay. We'll work on it. We'll We'll do some rehearsals. Don't worry. And I said, okay, fine. If you are confident, then be, I'm also confident if you are confident. So then that's how it started. And I we performed that show. We opened that show. And there is a thing, right? They say, right? That moment in your life when you suddenly feel like you belong somewhere. Right? That uh, somebody like me who was in the final of engineering. I was enjoying parts of engineering also. It was not like I was fully disconnected from it, but I knew somewhere that I wanted to do something else. I wanted to write. I always wanted to write. So I used to write even then. But you know how one is, right? One is not confident of sharing one's writing. Kisi notebook mein kuch dik diya, kabhi kuch computer pe kuch dik diya. But one wasn't confident. When this happened, I was like, okay, this is an interesting field theater. There is writing, there is storytelling, there is acting, there is lighting. There's so many aspects to theater. And it's a live art form, right? A live art form is always exciting because the audience is there, the engagement and all. And I'm slowly enjoying it, you know, being a part of it. So that was the start. Um, and uh, Abhishek Majumdar, who was the writer-director of that play, uh, we we did multiple shows and then what happened is that um, later on I, I I got a job I moved to Pune and when I moved to Pune I used to keep going to FTI because I thought one day I want to get into FTI and I thought I'll, I'll you know apply and all of that but for some strange reason the job was so demanding that I just couldn't engage myself with theater or film in any way so. But I used to go for screenings that used to happen open screenings and people could come in and. Strangely, this director, Abhishek, who, who I worked with in the play, then came to Pune to direct the students of FTI in a play. And that's when I started just going and meeting him every day. And then he said that, you know, why don't you come to Bangalore? Because I'm moving to Bangalore. Um, and I'm planning to start a theater group. And, you know, you can come and be a part of it. And so I then quit my job in Pune and I went to back, came to Bangalore. So 2010 ke aspas, uh, I moved back to Bangalore and uske baad, I started doing more and more theater with him and with others and you know, generally I started becoming part of the theater community. So I started acting, I started writing slowly um, and then I wrote a play which got a playwriting first runner up award in, in Bombay, uh, a Sultan Padansi playwriting award. So then these small things kind of give you a little bit of confidence, right? That, okay, fine. Kuch kar rahe, kuch kahi pe kuch recognition ho rahe. And parents also start feeling that, okay, kuch kar rahe, you know, like, my, of course, my parents were very against the whole idea of you know, just quitting a job and doing all of this. Uh, and that time I was being very rebellious, but now I understand why they were also feeling that. Um, but, but I think that was my, I would so... I know I'm not answering the question about filmmaking, but I'm just answering my question. I'm actually answering it in a way of how I entered the world of arts. 
because I was not at all into the world of arts before that. So my my entry became very accidental, and then I just kind of, you know, who say na, it's like a quicksand, dull dull. Like, was up under jarayo, jarayo, jarayo. Ko pata nahi chal raha hai ki ab kya kar rahe ho, but ab kar rahe ho. Ab logo ke saath baat kar rahe ho. And then that opened up a new world for me because uh, I was very lucky to work with people in the theater who were very enam, who were not enamored, but who were also equally excited about films. So that was a time when there were a lot of film screening societies. I don't know. I mean, now also there are, but very few, very independent film screening societies in Bangalore. There used to be a couple of them. So we started watching films, right? And you would watch a lot of independent films, right? You were independent cinema, like. Um, documentaries of Anand Patwardhan, documentaries by Deepa Dhanraj. Uh, like, you know, you would watch those really different and then documentaries from Europe and, you know, even America and, you know, you know Western countries. So suddenly a new world begins to open up, right? Like you suddenly realize that, oh, this can also be a film, right? Because I have grown up in my childhood, I grew up in Baroda, so which is and I grew up in a fam in a film family box, like you know, like uh, family which is full of filmy, like you know, nothing to do with films, but mad about films, right? You know, right from the Devan and then the, the just Friday evening means everybody, my family would be in the theater, you know, in the line to get the tickets. So there's a lot of conversation about films, right? So when I'm growing up, I'm watching Rishikesh Mukherjee, then I'm also watching uh, one is also watching stuff like. Ram Lakhan, and then one is also watching stuff like Hamap Kaikon, you know, all kinds of stuff is happening. And then uh, it's interesting, there was a period in my time when I discovered Sham Benegal cinema. So, you know, I, so for me, the journey has been very sporadic. Like the way my relationship with films started from entertainment to what films could do to what is possible in cinema, like, you know, just the whole aspect of. So films have impacted me very different. Different films have impacted me differently across my life. So coming to your question of why I just do to film is I, I realized after doing almost theater for 12 years, uh, and I still do theater, but I, I realized at one point, this was just during the COVID 2020, that I suddenly realized that uh, there are certain stories I want to tell, which um, which won't work on stage, which which won't work on in the in the play, uh, because there's something about a certain reality I want to show in my cinema or in my story. Uh, something about just just showing human beings in in a specific condition, human condition, a specific reality of that, right? And I find films to be very fascinating in depicting that uh, and certain kind of things, right? You know. Um, and those were the kind of films I was also very inspired by. So in around, around the pandemic is when there was an idea I had been thinking about writing, uh, you know, and I was wondering how to do this. I don't know how to write a screenplay. I had no idea how to write a screenplay. And I, I was, I, was, I didn't even, think, I didn't even know like screenplay make the sort of rules be over there, like, you don't know, have a format and stuff like that. So. I just reached out to friends who were in films and they were very kind to, you know, share material, suggest things, give books to read, films to watch. And, you know, initially one didn't even know like who you have to watch these masters and stuff like that. So my journey into cinema has been very slow, actually. In fact, there are so many films that people talk that you should watch this before you die, but I haven't watched it. And so it's, so I have discovered things very slowly in that sense. Uh, but for slow discovery, maybe I have figured out certain things and I'm, I'm still figuring out, which is why I think the title of your podcast, Trying to Do Cinema, is very, very uh, synonymous with what's happening with me right now, because I'm also trying to know the field in a way. Um, so I think when I realized that there is a story I want to tell and I know that I can't tell that and I don't want to tell that story, rather I, I don't think that story is meant for a medium like stage, theater. Is and then I strongly had images of you know film here. I, I strongly had Im visual images that were coming to my mind, right? And uh, I, I said that you know I I think I want to make a film. I I really want to try. I think I I think this is a story which is meant for film, and I want to say it through cinema. 
so that was that and of course the pandemic came in and um, a lot of exploration i started doing here and there there was some online filmmaking workshops that and which were very illuminating very gave me a lot of knowledge but the thing about film is that until you actually go and make it you don't you haven't made it like you know it's that's the whole thing so i was kind of yearning for that and so somewhere that that period is when i started to realize that i'm drawn to cinema actually there are certain kinds of stories i want to tell which are which are best suited for a cinematic medium or a, or a film medium yeah sir you have also directed theater as well for 12 years and since and you have recently directed short film so what's the difference between theater and film medium yeah apart from the obvious thing that everyone says that live and not live which actually i also have a bit of a this thing because sometimes you can watch a film and have a very live experience because you're watching with many people so you can have a very you know if you're watching a very uh, cheering kind of a film people can clap also together in a theater so beyond this whole live and not live kind of the idea i think i think there is something just fundamentally different about the way time works you know in cinema and stage and there is a very interesting thing that um, a playwright uh, a british playwright samuel stephens writes in one of his books is talks about what becomes cuts in cinema or shots in cinema in many ways one can say it's the entry exits on stage you know because every time someone enters a stage there is So if you look at classics, or if you look at a Shakespeare, you will say enter Hamlet, or exit Hamlet, right? There is something about there is a dramatic shift that happens when Hamlet enters and when Hamlet exits, and I think that that dramatic shift is very interesting on stage. That how space is in a way quite static because you are watching a play on a stage. The stage is not changing, right? so in a way you're kind of bound by space in many ways in the theater right and when you think of design also in a theater you are essentially thinking of how will i design a stage uh, and within that how will i show a particular space of my play so if my play is set in a 19th century villa then how will i create that on stage right but if i'm making a film i would go and have a production design which would resemble a 19th century In a, in, on a stage, you, I can. I don't have to make it very absolutely like the way it's supposed to be. You know, I can. I can still work with a lot of abstraction of things. Again, this can be. This can. Someone can come and say, "No, I don't agree with it." Absolutely fine. Um, but I think the fundamental difference I do believe is, um, it's it's also a lot to do with. It's also in the writing. It's also like if you just look at the writing for theater. and the writing for cinema i think there is something fundamentally even there which tells you something about both the mediums um so yeah apart from this whole live and non live experience i would say uh, there is something um you know recently i think there was some video of coppola frank he was talking about uh, the basic unit of cinema is shot and the basic unit of theater is scenes and that's very interesting because if you come back to the basic unit it tells the difference because in theater when there is one scene on stage you complete the entire scene and then you exit and then there is a next scene right uh, and i'm talking about a certain kind of theater even theater is changing but in cinema you know you can have the first 3 seconds of a shot in paris the next 4 seconds in bombay and the next 10 seconds in delhi like i can just cut across this and all three put together will make Uh, a scene sometimes <laughs> but like in theater to say now i now a scene 3 seconds of paris and 4 seconds and on stage is it's a different language it does it, i mean you will have to find a stage language for it if you want to say that yeah that's 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 what i feel so so you have made a film called do which uh, which was selected in new york indian film festival congratulations sir thank you thank you So, so how the idea came and what was your experience while making? Yeah, so uh, Lou is about uh, uh, a domestic helper who works in an apartment building. And it's it's I mean not that the city is ever mentioned in that sense, but it's set in Bangalore, right? And the and the film is in 
Canada and English. That's a short film. So it is essentially about a domestic helper who, who works in this house, and it's 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 a, it's a particular day in her life when uh, she wants to access the bathroom, the restroom. The, she finds uh, she she there's a struggle in accessing, and she contemplates using the one uh, in the house where she works, which she has never done. And the film essentially revolves around that central conflict of her wanting to use, and the the employer, the owner of the house, is also at home. Uh, and she's she's on a laptop on a video call, and the owner of the house. Uh, her employer is a teacher, uh, so she's teaching something on the class, and there is a connection also between what she's teaching and what's happening in the film. Um, so uh, yeah, it's it's a, essentially that's the central conflict of the film, and uh, and it it kind of looks at larger questions around class, caste discrimination, and again how this how some of these biases are ingrained they may not be actively played out every day but they are they are sort of how these biases kind of are part of the society structure uh, so it kind of puts a puts a kind of kind of puts a lens on that uh, kind of uses that as a uh, as a larger thematic kind of exploration but at the core of it it's a story of someone who's uh, struggling to find access to toilet uh, and somewhere I feel like uh, the whole idea of the word, using the word "loo" is a very modern term. Also has a certain a class attached to the whole idea of when we say "loo." It's interesting. It's interesting who uses the word "loo" and who uses the word "toilet." Who uses the word "latrine"? It's interesting how the word changes. And, uh, uh, somewhere for me, the film was about the whole class. Difference and the whole idea of who has access to what in in our society. So something as basic as that gets uh, compromised because of class. Yeah, and that's what the film is about. It's two characters: the the domestic helper and the, the employer. Yeah. So, sir, any difficulties you face while shooting? Because it's the first film. How nervous were you? Yeah, yeah. I was I was quite nervous, I would say. Definitely I was I was nervous about how things would go. Would it would it look the way I have it in mind? Um but I think I had a lot of support from um some very, very uh, some of the professional people who kind of you know, sometimes you say, right, that uh sometimes just all the things align and the right people come together, right? You just want the right people. When the right people come together, I think you do end up making a film from the heart, actually, because it's very important for the right people to come together. And I think I was very lucky to have the right people come together. So, um, right from uh, I, I, I did a very, very uh, I, I, so so somewhere around 2022. Th there's a context to this. I, I went and did a very short course in filmmaking from the Prague Film School because I wanted to learn, and I and I was I, I did not have the the financial or the time bandwidth to kind of commit to a longer course at that point. Um, but I I thought I had I had I had put some savings together, and I said if, if I want to use it right now, there was a one month course, and I knew a friend had gone there, and it was a very deep dive kind of into all aspects of filmmaking. It's not like you get a degree or anything. It's a very, it's like a summer course kind of a thing. Uh, and I said, let me just do it. And that's all I have right now. And let me just do it because I knew that a lot of film school had not resumed classes yet the, because they were still in partial online and offline. So I was like, I don't want to learn filmmaking online. So I, I'll kind of go and at least see how to do it, how to hold a camera, how to set up things. Uh, so I did that course, and uh, one of my teachers, uh, direction teachers. Uh, so when I wrote the script of the film, uh, in fact, he I, when I, so I came back to India, and then I wrote the script in two months, and I sent it back to him, and he kind of really helped me conceptualize the film as a director. So there was a writer part of me, but then he kind of came in and said, okay, you know what? Let's just 
break it down as a, as a director now how, how we're going to approach the thing so there was a huge support that came from there and just in terms of how to conceptualize the whole film actually from a short list to storyboarding and everything uh, and then i had uh, the two actors in the film both are very dear friends who are also theater actors so when i read the film out to them um, they said yeah we'll do it we'll come on board so there were there was of course a challenge uh, of that but i think i was supported very well uh, by my you and my dop who, who spent a lot of time with me before the film in just sitting down and helping me do that uh, the editor bhuvanesh who lives in chennai but constantly was part of conversations even in the pre production stages and then post the shooting also we had lot of so there was anxiety there was there was nervousness of how this will happen and uh, but i was well supported but yeah I, i do i do feel like so i was very lucky to have a good team but yeah there weren't there weren't any big challenges yeah there were some challenges like when we shot some things outdoor of course we did not have any police permission and stuff we just really just went and did it and uh, we made sure that so but so that they'll attract some crowd so there was a little bit of that and then the the apartment where i shot the film i had to take permissions of those things because that also had a very interesting thing so they were like what is this film about what are you trying to talk so it's very interesting how sometimes the challenges are also not in the making but in the outside of the making also there you know making making sure that you have what you want actually um but yeah i i would say it was a very uh, it was a very fulfilling process for me of course i couldn't sleep nights before the shoot i had i was quite nervous i was even during the shoot we shot only for two days because so that's the only money we had um and yeah we shot shot we shot like back to back and we were like on our toes with the everything we had a lot of shots to do so yeah i mean it was just it was fun it was a bit stressful here and there but i think i think it was it's something that only when you make you realize what are the things you need to rectify next time so they say you know like every everything every film or every play you make is a mistake and so that only next time you can rectify it <laughs> so that way yeah, there's lots that i got to learn there's a lot that i realized in the making yeah. and how much time it took to sir complete the film so i mean if you ask me from the writing point of view i spent a good month on this the writing and rewriting and stuff uh just making sure that i got my you know script to a point where i was confident for it also i would say yeah i think uh i think from a from a production standpoint shooting for two days and then we we locked the edit in two weeks we locked the final edit in two weeks two, two and a half weeks roughly and uh, i spent about a good one month on post production so i would say that or uh, one one and a half months on post production and two days of shoot uh, it's also because i was also um i was also working on a very limited budget so you know and the and and the team which came on board also you know uh, i had a wonderful team which did the post production so uh, we also took some time over there i was like you know let's not rush it so uh, we took some time on edit we took some time on sound we took some time on color right? but yeah overall i would say i would say one and a half months to be all all put together and sir uh, when it will be shown in new york so june 1st is when it's getting screened in new york uh, june 1st is i saw the poster two days ago so june 1st is when it's getting screened uh, and uh, yeah it's and in fact the film won uh, also won an award at the bangalore international short film festival yeah uh, in the in the karnataka competition so we were won an award there uh, and then uh, the film also was screened at the madurai uh, documentary and short film festival in the national and uh, yeah this is this is this is now 
starting the year with this festival, hopefully a couple of more festivals and then trying to figure out how to put the film out. There are short film platforms also. So yeah, I mean, that journey is going on. Yeah. Are you working on your future project as well, sir? Yeah, so there are... Um, so yeah, I mean, there are two short films that I've written, which I am, one of them I'm keen to like, make soon now i feel like uh, the urge to now like go out and make the next one is there uh, I'm, I'm trying to figure out the, the funding for it um uh, there is a feature film idea that i've been working on for the past couple of months which i'm hoping to also pitch to a couple of studios and see their interest uh, but yeah, that these are the two things I'm like right now working on. So there are two short films I've written, and fully I get to make one of them soon. Uh, and the feature film is the first time I'm writing a feature, so I'm kind of also a little figuring out actually as I'm writing. So sharing it with some screenwriters, getting their feedback. So it's in that process right now. But hopefully, I should be able to have a first draft of that by next month. Yeah. So let's see. It's all. It's all. It's all. It's all ongoing. Nothing. Nothing like ready yet. Yeah. Sir, if somebody wants to like assist you, so how they can approach you, sir? Oh, uh, I'm. I mean, my email ID or phone number is always there. I mean, email ID would be the best. Uh, to get in touch, uh, I'm also planning that if if I get to make the second shot soon, uh, if if I'm able to get the right funding and someone someone right to come on board, uh, I would say I, I'm also planning to put out post seeking for people to come on board. Uh, so I would do that for sure uh, on Instagram and Facebook. Um, but yeah, I mean. My email ID is there. I will mean, share that, and then that people can get in touch. I mean, just to tell that I'm also figuring things out. So it's not like I'll have a I'll have a huge team, but it's going to be definitely there's definitely I'm looking for a team of directors and people to come on board and be a part of the process. I do I do like collaborative processes. I do like I do like people who, who can come in with interesting ideas who can who can contribute um from the start in that sense so i do like collaborators who are who can you know uh, be involved um, from the beginning and not just like on shoot day so so something of that not that sort is what i look for but always yeah always open once i start working i will be looking for it. if you could recommend few films as well your favorite films and filmmakers <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I think, I mean, it's again vast and like, I think it's, it's so tricky to say that, but okay. Um, I think, uh, so I, I personally love, uh, stuff, which is kind of quite, which, which kind of has sense of a story or a narrative. That's for something I really like in films. So maybe I'm. I'm just saying from all the stuff that I might have rewatched and some stuff that I've discovered for the first time. So I think a film that I found very, very interesting was Andrea Arnold's uh, shot called Wasp. Uh, it's, uh, it's a very interesting uh, shot I found. Um, I would say um, definitely Chaitanya Tamane's quote and Disciple. So quote, in fact, quote, in fact, was a film that I saw and said, oh, wow, one could say this also. In cinema, one could one could make a film about this. So it's again very inspiring. In that sense. Uh, uh, I would say um, I think uh, Annie Swarda's films, I mean, all of some of them, like you know, faces, places. I think faces, places. It's called. Yeah. Uh, then there is uh, Vagabond. Uh, I think Vagabond is it Vagabond? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's Vagabond. Yeah. It's Vagabond. Yeah. Yeah, so I think that's also very powerful. I think, um, wow, I I really love Cohen Brothers writing. I love Cohen Brothers film. So I recently rewatched Fargo, 
which is on Amazon Prime running. So I would say Fargo is also very interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, so many films, right? I'm just thinking of it. There's so many things that inspire you at different points. Uh, I really enjoyed Lapata Ladies. Basically. So I'm also talking about those films. Uh, I Yeah, I think a mix of so many different kinds of films that one gets to watch. So depends what one is looking for. I mean, I, recommendations. Again, I sometimes go for recommendations. Sometimes if I'm writing a certain kind of film, I look for a certain kind of recommendation. That's also there. But yeah, all of these films that I said, I think. Also, all the works of these filmmakers. Even the filmmaker Jane Campion's uh, Power of Dog, who made Power of Dog, her short film, uh, which is, I think, on movie, if I'm not wrong, a uh, movie or somewhere. I think it's online. I think it's available online. I think it's a fascinating short film. I don't know what's it called. Is it called... Uh, Can you know? I've seen, I've seen the piano. Peel. It's called Peel. Oh. It's called Peel. Okay. She's a fabulous yeah. film. Yeah. So, yeah, that. And uh, recently, I'm also discovering Mike, Mike Lee, the British filmmaker. He's the meantime, which I've been watching. And I think it's fascinating how it's kind of depicting a very certain. Thing. So, again, I think. My, my my recommendations are also I, I love films which are like very specific like what i love about Cohen brothers is also the fact that they are so specific about a specific kind of america so i think that's yeah those are all my, i know we didn't ask this question but i've just uh added <laughs> to where but yeah some of these films are my recommended very uh, random but yeah Sir, last question is if somebody wants to become a filmmaker, like what advice would you give to them? Oh, I don't know if I'm in a position to give an advice because I have just made one short film. So I mean, there are there are far more experienced people have come on this podcast and shared their thoughts. Um, but I think I the thing I can say from my experience and it's be very limited. I, I I do believe that um, somebody wants to become a filmmaker, like making and directing a film. I do believe that um, filmmaking also has a large part of something about just understanding something about the technicality of film. Also, that feel is very important. Like because I come from theater, it's not that theater is not always seen as a very te- technical medium. It's still very it's very um, like you can have actors, you can have a rehearsal room, and it's it's a very you don't need technology always. Like unless of course you you put a stage, put a play on a stage, and you need lights, that's fine. But I feel when you make a film, you one needs to kind of begin to understand. There's a certain vocabulary also, like which one needs to understand. Uh, not that one needs to understand it to like throw words, but also vocabulary just to understand how would you communicate within a film crew and um and like if you the other part of thinking is that you can also make a film if you just have a phone like i can just go with the phone and make a film why not uh but then there is also the other side of making film with a full team with a full crew with with, a, with an entire setup there's also that joy of making a film so there are both sides to it and like i i enjoy all kinds of stuff like i love the stuff that anurag minus orma makes and i think it's it it comes into the whole culture of you know audiovisual and what it does what it does with just the medium of you know images and sound um, and text. But again, like uh, if you ask me film film in that sense, I think the technical know how is very important. So either one goes to goes to film school, which is great. One can you know, spend that time and go and learn in the right way. Uh, I know there is a lot of conversation going about film school or no film school and all of that. I would say film, film school can be amazing. It can, it can teach you a lot. It can give you a lot of perspective. Depends when you're going, which at which point in your life you're going to a film school. Um, um, yeah, I think the technical know-how is very important. Even if you don't know, even if you don't know the A, a to Z of a camera, but you still need to know the foundation of it, I think. And I think uh, so, most of the filmmaker, I think 
it's important to one is of course to watch films like you say if you want to be a writer you read books it's important to read but this is going to be a writer you should also write so i feel uh, i feel like there is there is something about uh, there is also something about just just broadening your understanding of storytelling i think that's something very interesting so what is happening in theater what is happening in literature what is happening in let's say different kinds of medium of storytelling i think just to be aware of those is very interesting for that uh and uh, yeah it's also very useful if you are if you make a film for a first time that to have somebody who is able to mentor you like to somebody who is able to guide you i think it's very useful i think it's very very useful to have somebody who you can trust and they they can also you know guide you in the way that is best for you to able to follow i think that support is very important to have somebody who who can tell you that no you're going wrong here just do it this way like, it's it's good for someone to tell you that this is wrong and this is right because it just saves you time sometimes and it just saves you a lot of things that you might go back and say oh my god i wish i had known this earlier i mean you will still have that moment that i wish i had known this earlier even if you do all the precautions and you think about everything but it's very useful to have somebody who who you can uh or you know experienced filmmaker who can be like a mentor to you in the process so it's just some kind of mentorship some kind of an understanding of a technical know how how cinema is made how film how film is actually made um and i think an exposure to different kinds of ways of storytelling different just to understand what storytelling is yeah this is what i would say but yeah this is from my experience purely okay great <laughs> sir thank you so much sir, for joining and again congratulations for loop it will be shown in new year i'm yes. excited i will i'll see you soon